Lots of focus on our southern and also now our northern border as well. And let's bring in Arizona Congressman and Judiciary Committee member. There he is, the great Congressman Andy Biggs. You know, Congressman, we were just talking about the Democrats refusing to go to the border for hearings, for a tour. Um, that decision, of course, coming ahead of a big meeting last week in Yuma. What does it say to you that the fact that the Democrats won't even show up for the meetings there and go visit the site? Well, it shows that they it's totally they have this indifference. They have this antagonism to the border crisis. They don't want to acknowledge that it's real. So, and they have crafted this narrative saying it isn't real. Everything the fentanyl crisis. They've they've kind of uh, twisted everything around. So they don't want to be confronted by people who are actually living with the ramifications of their policies, Rita. And and I I have to emphasize this. This wasn't just a field visit. This was an official authorized field hearing. It was where you were supposed to be. It was a a, a, a committee hearing that they'd been given notice of weeks before, and they chose not to go because they didn't want to hear from people who suffer because of these uh, outrageous policies that they've implemented and foisted upon the American people. Yeah, and they should be there. I 1,000% agree with you, and obviously uh, they have an obligation to be there for the American people. You know, this week, um, Congressman, I thought it was some of the most gripping testimony I have ever heard, especially in that hearing on fentanyl, to hear from those mothers who lost their children. There was one mother who lost two sons, uh, one of them like a day after graduation, two fentanyl. Um, that's just got to move uh, the nation, and yet we didn't really hear that much from Democrats about it. Yeah, again, this is they, they, they want to deny this. I mean, President Biden, let's not forget that he kind of laughed and chuckled and said that this was he was blaming this on President Trump. No, that's totally inaccurate. You have to have the empathy and understanding to these parents who have lost children. And the fact that we've had uh, over 100,000 deaths from opioid, uh, 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 I'm just going to call it what it is, it's poisonings. Um, and the vast majority of those fentanyl poisonings that come across the from the Mexican border, that didn't start rising and blowing up until Joe Biden became the president of the United States and took away our ability to secure our border. And for Democrats, I mean, some of them really, I think they do have some empathy, but they don't want to solve the problem because they don't want to take any action. And we had we had um, actually people in the committee that I was chairing say, well, you know, we, we, we can go after some of these drug dealers, but we're not going to go after the people who are actually distributing within the country because, you know, who knows? Somebody actually said this. We don't know what circumstances led them to deal in fentanyl pills. Now, these are poisoning our children and our colleagues and friends and family and associates, and they, they don't want to prosecute these people. They don't want to incarcerate them, if, if you will. Well, you know what's interesting, um, Congressman, and I don't know if you saw these comments from former Trump Attorney General uh, Barr. He actually said that the cartel should basically be treated like ISIS, and he even suggested uh, that Biden should be sending the military in uh, to some of these labs and some of these cartel uh, locations. What are your thoughts about that? Is it time to get really tough on the cartels? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I call them narco-terrorist organizations now because they are working as a terrorist organization to, to actually kill Americans. So the first step, Rita, in my opinion, is to declare them international terrorists and use all uh, of the capacity that that would allow us to do. And that would allow us to do things like attack their finances, uh, disrupt their stream of income, which is one of their biggest uh, which is one of the reasons they do this. They don't give a rip about Americans or about people. They're inhumane totally. But if you start disrupting their their money flow, that will hurt them. If you start then disrupting the flow from of fentanyl uh, exiting and uh, fentanyl precursor drugs exiting China and being uh, imported into Mexico, that also will disrupt this. Um, and we need to kind of look and see what what did we do in Colombia? Well, we we got permission. We went in and actually attacked and wiped out. A significant number of their of uh, their fields and their processing plants, and it really slowed down the drug uh, uh, invasion from Colombia uh, years ago. We have to do that again now, in my opinion.
Yeah, a lot of people feel that, and a lot of people feel the U.S. obviously has to initiate it because Mexico is not doing much. You know, Congressman, I want to get your take on this because it came out just a few hours ago that New York City is paying, and this is amazing, five to ten million dollars a day to house and feed migrants coming just to the Big Apple. This is, of course, taxpayer money. So I guess the question is, you know, can the Big Apple or really any city in America afford this? That's an enormous amount. That's a daily amount. Yeah, I mean, no, no, no municipality, no county, no state can afford, no, the country can't afford the level of uh, illegal migration that's taking place here. And so I, part of the problem in, in New York is they're trying to house, feed, and take care of these people. And, and, and none, of, none of the uh, Democrats, none of the left wants to deport these people and send them home. Um, and, and I think that's a huge problem. Uh, look, in Yuma, when we were down in Yuma, Rita, think about this. You have a, a community of 100,000 people, and in the last 13 months, 400,000 illegal aliens have entered and flowed through Yuma, and the, the hospital there has had to eat over $26 million in uncompensated care. And there are times that, that if you're going to, if you have a scheduled um, a delivery for a, a mother going in, there's no room because it's filled with illegal aliens who have come across the border. They're going to have to go to Phoenix or San Diego, and both of which are about three hours away yeah, the, for amazing. the nearest hospital. So it's yeah, outrageous. Uh, totally outrageous. Yeah, and I saw the CEO of that hospital just said they are just completely overwhelmed, and they're right there on the front lines, as you know all too well. Um, Congressman Andy Biggs, really great to have you here. We always love having you here on special on a Saturday report. Thank you. Thanks, Rita. Always good to be with you.